why don't we try the rinser waters? Okay. The water that we use simply to rinse out the bottles before we put any beer in the bottles. So we taste that too. It's water. Next step, why don't we try the chip beer? Chip beer, you said? That's right. This is the beer that's reached the end of the maturation process. No beechwood chips in here? No. <laughs> this beer will become Bud Light. Very flavorful, very heavy. Jeez, yeah, that beer. tastes good. A multi-billion dollar global beer company, and it all comes down to this. A group of people sitting around a table, tasting beer together. I like to do them two at a time. That's just my thing. Oh yeah, sweet. I'm going undercover. Deep inside the largest beer can catacomb on Earth. I get why beer inspires loyalty, even devotion, but that's not the half of it. Turns out that some ancient cultures actually bowed down to beer gods. Number three, Ninkasi, the ancient Sumerian goddess of beer and brewing with the power to satisfy human desire. Number two, Osiris, the Egyptian god of the underworld and guardian of beer. And the number one beer god, Silenus, the Greek god of beer and drinking buddies. While Silenus may no longer be a household name, his influence is still apparent today. And there's at least one new shrine that he would no doubt be happy to bless. This is the house I live in. This is the house I built for my cans. In total, Jeff's collected over 56,000 cans for the Man Cave to End All Man Caves in central Pennsylvania. I do collect cans from all around the world, but um, probably the best part of my collection is rare cans from other countries. This is the Scandinavian room. This is the German room. This is sort of a catch-all room, Central and South America, Mexico, Africa. Now we're going to go into the Pacific Rim room. As far as I know, this is the largest collection in the world. So, why cans? I don't know. I started when I was 14 years old, and for whatever reason, a lot of teenage boys collected beer cans. I don't know why. And I actually got into it from a friend of mine, and I sort of got bitten by the bug as well. So these two cans, this can was from Burma, and then after the government changed over, it became Myanmar. I do like beer, but for me it's the, the appeal of the graphics that really, really gets me. You know, that every single can was actually designed by someone, which uh, when you have 56,000 cans in the house, it's kind of mind-boggling that each one of those had to be individually designed. Jeff, along with his dad and a team of volunteers, spent the better part of two years erecting this temple of beer cans. I always wanted to have a place to display the collection. And um, when I got engaged, uh, it started the process a little bit quicker because I realized once I got married, there's no way my wife was going to go for that. So uh, once I got engaged, I started um, the process of designing the place and I made sure to get the footers in before I was married. That way there was no turning back. The fact that Jeff can collect tens of thousands of distinctive cans suggests to me that there is in fact a fifth ingredient without which modern beer would not exist. Care to guess what it is? Crisp. Clean. Cold. Refreshing. Quick. What do these adjectives say? Beer commercial. Everything you always wanted in a beer. And less. From the king of beers, to the champagne of beers, to the coldest tasting beer in the world, even the craft brewers. The beer industry pours over $800 million a year into television ads. It's blue like your eyes. Which begs the question, is it beer's taste or its marketing that drives our perpetual thirst? 
For the answer, let's go to the source. DDB in New York City, one of the biggest ad agencies in the world. Hi, I'm Bob Scarpelli, Chairman, Chief Creative Officer, DDB Worldwide. Bob's the mastermind of some of the most successful beer commercials in history. See, what's cool about it is that's the idea. Every time you say the word dude, there's a different inflection which has a different mm -hmm. meaning. Dude, dude. Very good, okay, cool. How do we take a product like beer, which is one of the oldest products in history, and make it new? What do we want the customer to get out of our commercial, our communication? Well, I think it's about creating a brand that people can be loyal to and they want to be part of. One of the great things about uh, Anheuser-Busch is they look at marketing as an ingredient in the product. Okay, so this is Beer 101's advanced course. Beer is made with water, grains, hops, yeast, and marketing. Bud Light keeps it coming. Take beer's holiest day of the year, the Super Bowl, where a single 30-second spot costs over two and a half million dollars. Super Bowl has become sort of the unofficial American holiday. It's one of the number one beer selling, beer drinking days of the year. That's the look, right? Anheuser-Busch will make a number of commercials in order to pick the five, six, or seven that go onto the game itself. Since I was born, I dreamed of being a Budweiser Clydesdale. Only problem is, I was born a donkey. It's my favorite shot. Serpentine through the trees. It takes a few weeks to create the effects. We like to make people believe that Hank is actually pulling that train, but there are some, yeah, CGI computer graphics involved here, of course. Is marketing really that important? Two words. Light beer. Miller Light was introduced in the 70s. It wasn't the first light beer, but it was the first nationally distributed light beer. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. How'd you do that? Just five years after introducing light beer, Miller's sales shot up 400%. Bud Light was introduced in 1982. Their challenge? Find a way to surpass Miller's early success. We just wanted to make people think about Budweiser in a new way. And really, we went back to their classic, classic line, this Bud's for you. So what we were trying to do is say, this advertising is for me, therefore this brand is for me. This Bud's for you. When someone in a bar says, make it a Bud Light, they're asking to be part of the whole phenomenon that is Bud Light. The fun of it, that beer you have in front of you, says something about you, says something about the per kind of person you are, the choices you make. Their plan worked. In fact, Bud Light is now the number one selling beer in the world. On tap... Myth or fact? A green bottle prevents skunking. A bottle is better than a can. Beer causes beer bellies. Okay, you're almost a full-fledged beer genius. Except for one final lesson. Your education would be just cliff notes without tapping the ultimate in beer dispensing technology, the keg, and the art and science of the perfect pour.